Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, June 4th, 2020, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the updated polling information for the 2020 presidential election. So I haven't made a video covering strictly polling data in quite some time now in terms of um, multiple statewide and national polls. They just recently released them on June 3rd, so I thought it'd be very fitting to cover them in today's video. Uh, they do hold some very interesting information. The race is definitely shaping up to be a lot better for Vice President Biden than where it was, uh, you know, just a couple of months ago. Taking a look at the national average, actually, Joe Biden is leading by the largest margin of victory he's had uh, since 2019. So this this is his largest lead all of 2020 as we get through about halfway through the year now um, and at least halfway to the presidential election. Uh, when we're looking at the overall national polls, you can see on your screen right now where Donald Trump is now leading and where Joe Biden has now taken the lead in terms of statewide polls. I know the map looks very weird seeing states such as Pennsylvania red and states such as Florida blue, but... Again, um, these are very specific polls. These are statewide races, and uh, things definitely could change uh, overnight. And this is just your update based off of the data that we have right now in June. Um, I will be making an announcement later today just about something uh, in terms of my channel itself, um, something that I've been working on for a little bit of time now, but uh, I'll wait until I make that video to give you guys a general idea uh, of what I'm doing. But today we're just going to purely analyze the polling data that we recently have. I mean, we haven't really seen much data. The election has been pretty stagnant with a 5% lead for Vice President Biden throughout uh, quite some time now. But uh, it's soon, it just recently has jumped up in terms of uh, Biden's performance nationwide, a seven point lead nationwide. If we saw a seven point overall uh, popular vote victory, Biden would be winning states such as North Carolina uh, and Florida and possibly even Georgia. I mean, on the presidential map, um, Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote back in 2016. If you remember, uh, it was around less than 2%. So um, it wasn't exactly a pretty at least a very, very solid margin of victory nationwide. And there definitely could have been rooms for improvement for Hillary Clinton. But, um, you know, Donald Trump has pretty much hit a low point again, like I said, nationwide. Yesterday, actually, uh, he was at, well, today as well, 42.1%, okay? So the only time he really hit 41, 42% was April. But other than that, he's been hovering around 44, 45% nationwide um, after 2020 hit. I mean, uh, there was only one small period of time. And even then, Biden also took a dip as well. Uh, but it seems like Joe Biden is taking an increase in terms of data and uh, Donald Trump is taking a decrease because if we look at the overall uh, national numbers, you know, Biden has pretty much led in every single poll, but uh, the numbers have seemed to increase for him. As you can see, Biden plus one, Biden plus three, Biden plus five. There was an outlier, uh, Biden plus 11, but um, that's not accounted for in this overall average Biden plus three. And then the polls that repeat themselves, the uh, economic slash YouGov one went from Biden plus three just a week ago, uh, sorry, just two weeks ago to Biden plus seven a week ago. Um, or if numbers went from Biden plus four, um, CNBC now puts, uh, sorry, not CBS. I don't know why they didn't include the CBS. Oh, because YouGov did it twice. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other ones that were um, economists slash YouGov seem to do it a lot. So uh, C mm, CNBC shows Biden plus three, Biden plus seven. So things definitely did change on the national average for Vice President Biden. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Florida polling data because Recently, um, <clears throat> the CNBC poll I was really skeptical about because it shows Donald Trump leading in Pennsylvania, but then it shows uh, Joe Biden leading in Florida. But then again, that could just be wrong uh, for individual states in terms of the sample that they used, uh, because really those electoral trends don't really match up. But then again, uh, the American electorate loves to change things uh, very quickly. When we look at 2016, Donald Trump was expected to carry the state of Florida. It was always a narrow race between him and Secretary Clinton, but um, when we uh, came down to the election day, uh, she, he had led by 0.2% statewide and ended up winning by 1.2%. So he outperformed by a margin of around 1%. And even if uh, Donald Trump does that based off these numbers, Joe Biden still wins. So that polls were accurate in 2016 in Florida. And now they show Joe Biden ahead. And it's a very important victory for Vice President Biden if he is to win in those states. We're going to go ahead and actually fill in the rest of the electoral votes and how I pretty much expect them to go nationwide because that gives you... Um, a lot, I guess, a much better idea <clears throat> of the impact of these uh, numbers. Because again, if Donald Trump has a very solid hold um, on some of these states, it still won't matter. Uh, Joe Biden leading in a number of these states uh, is really going to completely change the way that this map is written. As you can see, even if Joe Biden uh, loses Pennsylvania and Texas, according to these recent numbers, 
still wins the election with 331 electoral votes based off the numbers we have right now. Florida is uh, very, very big for the Trump campaign. He cannot win the election without Florida. Trump could single-handedly flip all of these Rust Belt states. He could flip back Arizona. He could hold on to Ohio. Uh, and then if Florida and North Carolina, or even if North Carolina goes to Trump, if Florida goes to Joe Biden, all Joe Biden needs is maybe one Rust Belt state, uh, actually Arizona. Arizona will put him over the top. Uh, so again, it is very important that um, Donald Trump uh, is losing in those states because Joe Biden's campaign is going to look a lot better at this point when we're talking about the overall national average. Uh, you know, Joe Biden has pretty much always led nationwide. He's always had a very strong and commanding lead, as Hillary Clinton did in 2016. But the statewide races are what matters. The Electoral College is what matters. And Donald Trump, while being uh, a very strong candidate on his own, I will say he is a strong candidate. He defeated um, one of a very strong Democratic candidate in 2016. He needs states that are very crucial to his reelection. But Florida is 29 electoral votes that um, could single handedly give Trump a loss. If Biden is able to flip even one Rust Belt state along with Florida, uh, he defeats Donald Trump. If that state is Michigan or Pennsylvania, or even if he flips Arizona, which he's already the favorite to win. In Pennsylvania, the recent poll actually shows Trump ahead by 4%, but the overall average shows Biden ahead by 4%. So uh, this isn't the overall average polling numbers. These are just the most recent uh, numbers taken in those states. But Pennsylvania. Um, goes to Trump by 4% in that recent poll, which I think would be very interesting if Trump was losing in all these other states and winning in Pennsylvania. I think that would be something uh, to talk about after Election Day in Michigan. Uh, Biden leads by only 2%. Now, the numbers are narrow narrowing up. In 2016, Hillary was expected to, to carry it by 3.4%. It narrowed up very rapidly, actually, as we reached Election Day. She led by 11, 12% uh, before the October uh, email thing hit for her. And uh, it pretty much narrowed up the race drastically within a matter of days. As you can see, she went from a 12-point lead two weeks later to losing the state on Election Day by 0.3%. So, um, again, a Biden plus two margin is not super secure for the Biden campaign. In Wisconsin, uh, they show a tie. The CNBC changed research. It's a tie, but I decided to go ahead and give it to uh, Joe Biden by um, a, a narrow margin in the lean margin because that's what the overall spread is because Fox News released a poll that was even more recent. So I'm going to take that into account as well. Um and that actually shows him in a, a nine-point lead in the state of Wisconsin. Now, in 2016, this was the only state that was dead wrong. It predicted a Hillary Clinton victory by 6.5% statewide. Donald Trump actually had the largest margin of victory in this state. So I can only imagine when Hillary was leading by 4% that uh, Trump definitely would have had a much larger margin of victory in uh, the state of Wisconsin. But the polls were wrong on Election Day in Wisconsin. They ended up um, being completely wrong, but it was the only state in 2016. So again, a Biden 3.4% margin should not be super secure. For the Biden campaign. As you move over to Arizona, however, Trump and Biden pretty much had conflicting polls. One showed Trump ahead by 1%. Fox News showed Biden ahead by 4%. Fox News was an A-minus pollster from 538. So I honestly do trust that one more than change research. Um, but when we're looking at the overall national numbers, Arizona has been very consistent in favor of Vice President Biden. And if that one goes to Joe Biden, again, that negates the need for a state such as Wisconsin, a state that is a lot narrower than where it was in 2016. And even if it does go to Trump, if Arizona is going to the Democrats, um, it would be very good news for them. In fact, Donald Trump underperformed his margin of victory in Arizona on Election Day by 0.5 percent. So it was that last minute change that really put Arizona in the uh, Donald Trump column. But it's a lot more likely to go to the Democratic Party this time around in North Carolina. This is not a crucial state to the Biden campaign, but it definitely is to the Trump campaign. This is 15 electoral votes in 2016. It was supposed to be a small victory for Donald Trump, a 1 percent lead statewide uh, after Hillary dominated here for the entire month of October. Once November hit, um, pretty much Trump had a pretty solid victory here. And it was very interesting because uh, North Carolina has recently moved over um, more Democratic, whether it's in the House elections being redrawn and the 2018 House numbers uh, reflect a very good standing for the Democratic Party. Um, in fact, if they ran a third uh, or candidate in the third district, the Democrats would have won the statewide popular vote in the House of Representatives elections in North Carolina. Despite them only winning three out of the 13 House seats, thus the need for redistricting, um, you know, North Carolina probably would have had a Democratic popular victory if they had fielded candidates in every race. And in 2020, it looks like Biden in the recent poll is leading by one and 
four uh, percent. Which um, on the overall spread, when you take account to Trump's victories of three and five, uh, three and three, and then a Biden plus five, it gives an overall average of Biden plus zero point eight, which is why it's reflected as zero point. Uh, sorry, as a tilt state. But again, it would be very crucial to the Biden uh, to the Trump campaign for re-election, not so much to the Biden campaign. Same thing goes for Ohio. Uh, Biden seems to be running up the numbers in states he doesn't need to win. He does not need to carry the state of Ohio to win the election. Like I had said, Trump could win Ohio, North Carolina, even Florida. And then if you just take uh, Pennsylvania and make it Democrat and you take away Arizona, or even if you take away, if you give Arizona the Democrats and you take Wisconsin, which is the uh, closest race right now, and give it to Donald Trump, Biden still wins the election. So Biden right now is actually doing very well in terms of uh, winning in states he doesn't need to be winning in. He's taking the lead in North Carolina, in Florida, in Ohio, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Arizona, which puts him at 331 electoral votes. This is very similar to the 2012 map. This would be the largest uh, margin of victory since, actually, sorry, not the largest margin of victory, uh, a larger margin of victory than Obama, uh, than Trump in 2016, and reflecting what we saw for Obama in 2012. So it'd be a very solid victory for Vice President Biden. And in fact, this Quinnipiac University poll shows Trump only ahead by 1% in the state of Texas. In 2016, uh, the overall numbers were, uh, were Trump plus 12% statewide. He ended up winning by 9%. If he does underperform this, this would actually go to Vice President Biden based off of the 2016 numbers. But again, that's probably not going to happen. Trump is probably going to carry Texas more than likely. However, it is just very interesting that Texas has narrowed up to a point where it's going to be considered as a toss up state, where it's going to be considered as a lean Republican state instead of safe or likely. And that completely um, would change the overall electoral map if Texas became a pure toss up. So right now, Joe Biden is based off of all of the events that are happening, whether it's the COVID-19 pandemic or the uh, protests that are happening in numerous cities. Donald Trump is lacking uh, in a number of key races. Joe Biden has been running up the numbers in areas he does not need to win. He does not need Ohio. He does not need North Carolina. He does not need Florida, but he's winning in them. And that makes the map a lot more difficult for Donald Trump and his pathway to re-election. And as of today, based off the numbers and based off his approval ratings and based off everything that we're seeing, Donald Trump would lose re-election. And these numbers perfectly reflect that. So again, I'm going to make an announcement a little bit later today, hopefully, um, once everything uh, finalizes on my side for the channel. Um, it's just something to do with um, the little join button that you see by the subscribe on your YouTube app or on the YouTube web browser, whatever you might use. Uh, but I'll be discussing that later today. Again, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all later today.